Here is a Sony XVC900 video multi-color corrector. This is quite a complex piece of analog video equipment made in 1990 according to the date codes on all the ICs. And as you can see, it has been taken apart because this had a rather significant problem when I got it. Thankfully, not an electronic problem. Just imagine having to do fault finding in all of this. No, it was a mechanical problem. You can see on the back of the unit is this heatsink that's protruding. And the unit got smashed into something and the heatsink got pushed in. And that has bent this whole entire back panel inwards. And so I just spent about two hours taking this all apart to a point at which I could take this panel, just the panel itself, with nothing attached to it anymore, and bend it back into shape, and bend everything else back into shape, and then reassemble everything. Now, bending this panel back into shape was actually not too difficult. That was quite straightforward. The complicated part was bending this part of the chassis back into shape. As you can see, this piece of metal, this bracket, folds around multiple times, and this got completely pushed in. So this mounting hole was actually pushed about half a centimeter further back maybe even more. And that was, of course, very bad for these circuit boards. This is quite a nice design. There are three layers of circuit boards in this, and we have this double stack, and you can take off the top board and fold it up to get to the middle circuit board, or you can leave the two together and fold them up together to get to the bottom circuit board. Now, these are not very well held in place, I have to say. Basically, they have screws in all four corners, and they bend and flex under gravity. But uh, when the chassis got smashed in, that was actually an advantage because it meant that all of these boards could bend to follow the new shape of the chassis. And it did not really cause any damage. That was actually something that I checked straight away before I even bought the device. When I noticed that the back was pushed in, we took it all apart, the seller and I, and checked the boards. And thankfully, no cracks, except I just found one, which is down here. You can kind of see it. It's right there around this screw. There is a crack. But that should not be critical, because it just seems to go into a ground plane. So that's easy to fix. Aside from that, bending the chassis back into shape was successful. If I fold the boards down, the stack will now actually clear the back of the case. And that, now you can see how much of a distance there is between the boards and the back panel. And the boards used to get caught on the back panel. You had to push the back panel backwards to uh, get the boards up. There is now plenty of clearance, and if I lower them down all the way, you can kind of see that uh, the hole in the board does align pretty well with the screw hole in the bracket. It's quite interesting to take a closer look at the board in the center of the stack. There are three areas on here that have not been populated with electronic components. They are just empty. This area is labeled CNR, which stands for Chroma Noise Reduction. And there is a button for Chroma Noise Reduction on the front, but that doesn't really seem to do anything. It doesn't make a difference. Well, who knows? 
Maybe that is the reason. Also, there are these two areas, YC separate and YC mix. The unit does give you two types of connectors, composite video and S video, but you can't go between the two. If you feed in composite video, you can only get out composite video. If you feed in S video, you can only get out S video. You cannot feed in composite video and get out an S video signal, and vice versa. And I'm pretty sure if these two areas had been populated with components, that would have been possible to go between the two types of connectors. Also on this board is this a strange array of holes through the board. The center circuit board has been reinstalled and you can see along here how much it is sagging just with gravity. That is not ideal. I have fixed the crack in the board as you can see. Now the crack only went partially into this ground plane, so really it would not have caused any problems, but I still decided to stabilize it a bit to keep the crack from continuing further into the board. So I scraped off some of the resist and placed this ugly blob of solder right there, which does not connect to this metal bracket, but even if it did, it won't matter because uh, this metal bracket does not connect to anything electrically, it's just floating. Well, actually, it has scratched off the resist right there, so, well, the metal bracket has grounded itself, it looks like. Now, the nice thing about these relatively simple paper-based circuit boards is that when they crack, they kind of change color on the top around the crack. The shade of brown changes, so they highlight the crack, makes them easy to find. So I'm quite confident that there are no other cracks in these boards. Also, here is the other side of that weird array of holes through the board. As you can see, this does not connect to anything. It's just a bunch of floating holes. It might have something to do with this shielded section on the board above, but, well, this is not even grounded, so I have no idea what Sony was thinking there. And just as I was getting ready to put the unit back together, I noticed another problem. This capacitor has a bunch of crap and corrosion leaking out of it, so that will have to be replaced. Now this capacitor is part of the wipe pattern generator, so I guess that is the reason why the circular wipe really didn't work very well when the unit was cold. This is an Elna capacitor. There is another one very similar to it over here, but that seems to be fine. But of course I have checked the rest of the unit, and it turns out there are two more Elna capacitors down here, and they are both leaky. So these will have to be replaced as well, which is going to be a bit of a pain because they share their holes in the board with a resistor and an integrated circuit, so these must have been a bit of an afterthought. These are all 220 microfarad at 10 volts ELNA capacitors that have gone bad. All the other capacitors are fine. Thankfully, I would not like having to recap this whole entire unit. That took a bit longer than expected. I ended up replacing all of the small value ELNA capacitors. There were eight of them. Thankfully, they were easy to find because they have a rather odd color, which doesn't really come across very well on camera. There were two on the top board, two 
on the center board and four on the bottom board. We have already seen three leaky ones, but there was another one that had actually started damaging the board. So there were a total of four leaky capacitors. Two capacitors had a low capacitance and only two of these were still fine. Now only four large value ALNA capacitors remain, 1000 microfarads at 10 volts. I don't have any adequate replacements for them, so they'll have to stay. And while I had this all apart, I took the opportunity and also redid some solder joints, like on these voltage regulators. I also checked the capacitors surrounding these voltage regulators to make sure that they had not been damaged by the heat, but they are all still fine. The circuit boards have been reinstalled. Some of the screws are needed for grounding, so you have to have them in place when you want to run the unit. I have a test pattern generator connected. Let's power up the unit, and while it's still cold, let's see if the circle wipe now works properly. Here we go. Okay, it is showing the output from the test pattern generator. Let's try the circular wipe. And look at that, it's working properly. as you can see. And there it is, put back together and ready to go again, the Sony XVC900 color corrector and video effects generator. This is quite an interesting device. Just like a lot of the equipment that Sony built as part of the XV series, just do an online search for Sony XV. They made some really interesting devices back in the 90s to make your videos look more interesting. Thank you for watching.